Okay, let's get started. Ghosts are real. That much I know. Hey horror freaks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Inventa. If this is the first time you're here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get a notification every single time that I post a video and I post every single week. So you can see from the title, today's video is going to be my full review with spoilers of the, the British horror film The Descent. Now, as always, all my reviews are with spoilers. If you don't want them, unfortunately, I do not do spoiler-free reviews for films that are already out, so I apologize. But saying the disclaimer, let's get into the video. Now, The Descent is a 2005 British horror film that is written and directed by Neil Marshall, and it follows six women that enter a cave system and struggle to survive against the humanoid creatures inside. The film opened in cinemas in the United Kingdom on July 8th of 2005. Then it premiered in the Sundance Film Festival in 2006. It was officially released on the United States on August 4 of 2006, becoming a box of his success and also receiving positive reviews, it is actually considered one of the best horror films of the 2000s decade. In a sequel that is called The Descent 2, it was released in 2009 that it was written and directed by John Harris, this, the film editor of this one. Now to give a brief summary of the story, the film follows a group of friends that they are thrill seekers and the film opens when they are white water rafting and the protagonist that is Sarah she was with her husband and her daughter when they are returning home they have a car accident and Sarah is the only survivor one year later after the accident the friends decide that they want to help Sarah get out of her depression and help her with the grief so they take her to the Appalachian mountains in North Carolina so they can do some hiking and also explore some caves this is when things start to go very very wrong for this group of friends while they are on the caves, one of the passages collapses, trapping them into the cave. Now, they are supposed to inform someone in what cave they were supposed to be, meaning that if something happens to them, they can find them. But one of the girls that is called Juno, the one that had the idea of doing the trip, she confesses to the group that she took them to an unexplored cave. She lied not only to the group, but to the people that were supposed to know where they were going. Meaning that when they try to find them, they're going to be looking on the wrong place. And then now we have a group of six women trapped in caves that they have no idea how to get out. At this point, the only option for the group is to keep moving forward in order to find an exit. And while they were doing it, they discover age climbing equipment and some paintings in the caves that suggest that an exit actually exists. One of the girls, she believes that she sees a hole with some sunlight in it and she decides to run to it, but she ends up falling into a bigger hole and she breaks her leg. So now we have them not only trapped inside a cave, but with one of them being completely injured because she breaks her leg very, very bad. While they are trying to help her, the friend, Sarah sees a humanoid pale creature that is shrinking from a little lake that is on the caves but it quickly goes away and at first she could be thinking this has to be my imagination this can't be real i mean this girl is already dealing with a lot of stuff so probably she thinks that it's just part of her mind but it wasn't it's because inside of the caves there are these humanoid creatures that they have a desire for flesh Meaning that these girls are in a terrible danger. Creatures are known as scrollers, and as expected, one by one of the girls are going to be killed one way or another, either by an accident or by the crawlers, leaving us at last Juno, Sarah, and the crawlers. This is the moment when we have a shocking reveal, and it's the fact that Juno was having an affair with Sarah's late husband. She is not only now dealing with the grief, the fact that she just lost part of her friends, but she just realized that her husband was unfaithful with her friend. That's betrayal. So what does Sarah do? She leaves Juno to die. Sarah is able to escape the cave. She gets out. She's able to get into the car, leaves. She has to stop in the middle of the road because she starts vomiting and when she lifts her head she sees an hallucination of a bloody Juno 
And that's how the film ends. Now, this film had an alternative ending that was actually shown when it was released in the United Kingdom, but it wasn't that well received, so that's why they decided to leave it as an alternative ending and not as a deal ending. And is that Sarah's escape is just an hallucination and she's actually still trapped into the cave and she dies just like the others. Now, like I said at the beginning, this film is considered one of the best horror films of the 2000s decade. And I do have to agree. Just in case this film is available to watch on Max. So if you have the streaming service, you should go and watch it. You have the first one and you also have the sequel there. Now, the first thing I do want to say, it's very common to hear, this is the scariest film ever. This film gave me nightmares. And when you see it, you realize that it's not that bad. It's not that scary. Well, if there is something that I do have noticed is that almost every single person that I have talked with or I have read about, they have seen this film they say that this is one of the scariest films that they have seen and it's because it, it truly is. I didn't feel scared but the film is able to not only make you feel scared but also very tense, anxious and has a very claustrophobic feeling. And at least me, I am claustrophobic. There's nothing that I hate more than being in an enclosed space. It's awful. So for me, being in a cave is a big no-no. There's no way I will get myself into a cave like that. Hell no. So for me, that feeling, it's awful already. And seeing these girls struggling in the cave, seeing them trap, and seeing everything that is happening is an awful feeling. And the film is able to make you feel it because it feels very real. The story is also very engaging and effective because at first it's a very simple story. It's just a group of friends. One of them is dealing with a lot of stuff so they decide to take her out to have some good time like the old days. But of course things get over complicated along the way. We are not only going to be seeing throughout the film how the relationship has changed after the accident but also Juno reveals of the affair and some other details and moments that happen when they are into the cave that, of course, I didn't went into details in the brief summary because if not, I am taking away every single thing about this film. So that's something that you have to find out if you watch it, if you haven't already. And this is something that, in my opinion, makes the film even more interesting because we're not only having this group of friends that are dealing with the scrollers, but they are also dealing with the relationship and the friendship. We can see how they change after the accident. We see that there's a weird dynamic. And this is something that happens. Something happens in the group and everyone is taking sides. That type of dynamic is something that it does happen. So it feels even more real. Now, as for the cast, these girls, they did a fantastic job. It's an all-female cast. They did it so good. Those screams, their acting, they felt very real. The film feels realistic. Of course, if some creatures, they do actually exist in some cases somewhere, we may never know. But this is something that has happened. People get trapped in caves. They get stuck. Also, I did not find this film to be predictable. Something that happens a lot in these type of films is that they turn a little bit predictable. You kind of know how it's going to end. But the reality, for a moment, I actually thought that they were not going to be able to get out. I didn't saw the alternative ending first. I saw the American one that is the actual ending that you will be seeing on HBO. That it's when Sarah gets out of the caves and she had the hallucination of Juno in the car. But then I found out about the alternative ending that if they have used it, there was no point of actually doing the sequel. Because the whole reason why the sequel happens is because they found Sarah. Because what the sequel shows is that they were looking for them in the wrong place as it was going to happen. So, Meaning that showing just that and somehow they gearing into the caves it wasn't really going to make sense. But they f the fact that Sarah was alive and they were able to track from where she actually came from, that works a little bit better. As for the only thing that I would criticize, or for me what makes this film almost perfect but not completely perfect, is that by some moments 
they turn a little bit too dramatic. There are some situations that happen inside the caves that they are a little bit over the top and um, and I was thinking, why so much drama? <laughs> we have some priorities here. But of course, it's part of the friendship dynamic and what is happening. But at the same time, they could have toned it a little bit down, just a little bit. But for the rest, I have nothing to complain. This is a very, very good horror film. It's indeed one of the best horror films of the 2000s. We know that this is a time that so many people believe that is the worst era for horror. I do not agree, but I do not completely disagree. Every decade has the good things and the bad things, but I think that this one is one of the best. It's a must-watch if you haven't watched it already. Like I said, it's on Max. I haven't heard or read about someone saying that this film is bad or that they did not like it. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but I am just telling you that... All the opinions that I have seen, they are very good and for a reason. The film is very, very good. The sequel is not that good. I'm not going to lie. It's not as good as the first one. But it still serves to watch even after the fact that it's basically just a basic sequel that no one really asked it. And I have seen people asking for a third, but I don't really see the point of doing a third film of this. But still, I think that The Descent is a hell of a good film if you haven't watched it go and do it. So for me, this film is a 4.5 out of 5. It's an almost excellent horror film. For me, like I said, the only point I will be taking is the a little bit dramatic parts, but for the rest, they did a hell of a good job. Really, you're going to feel it, how tense and claustrophobic it is. They did a very good job with bringing those feelings outside of the screen, because sometimes you watch these films and you just don't feel it. You feel how fake it is. Here not. Here you're feeling how real it can be. And that there's a possibility that this can actually happen. Like I said, not me. I'm not getting into that cave. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm fine. I am not that type of person. And I will never be. But well, thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below what you thought about this film the first time that you saw it. Or if you're planning on watching it. Have you ever heard about this? Did and This is your first time finding out. Let me know. But well, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys on my next video. Bye. That much I know.